What if I told you that you could design and live the life that you want on your own terms? Would you do it? Would you take a leap into the unknown? Or would you settle for a life of limits? A life of safety but lacking true meaning? Zephan Moses Blacksburg here, and I'm on a journey to help you ignite your inner passions, let go of your fears, and get more out of life. Will you join me and make this year your year of purpose? Welcome to the Year of Purpose podcast. Two years ago today was when I left my full-time job working for the Apple Store. Now, I know this is something that so many people at this point in time wish they could say, that they're working for themselves, that they're living a life on their own terms. And the truth is you really can, which is why today I brought in Sarah Peterson, and she is the author of Unsettled.org, where she encourages people to never settle for careers that they don't love. Now, Sarah, you were telling me that you were kind of in a similar boat. You had a government job and you had started a couple of side businesses and basically your friend said, well, why don't you just do this full time? And things kind of took off from there. So how about let's share with everybody listening in today, uh, you know, from uh, the day you left your job, what'd you do from there and what type of businesses were you running? Sure. So it probably makes sense to talk a little bit about before I left my job. Sure. Um, because I took a contract with a different employer who I really liked and I loved the contract. It was a lot of fun and the team was great, but I, I just wanted to be able to travel when I wanted and kind of be my own boss and control where I worked and when I worked and what on what I worked on. So I started Unsettle really before I quit my job um, and I started, you know, learning and launching and everything like that. So it started on January 5th. And then on February 4th, which is my birthday, it was my last day of my contract. So I decided not to renew my contract, even though I really liked it, um, and then just go on this trip. So I booked a one-way ticket to Europe with a friend, a fellow blogger, (laughs) and we were there for six weeks. And so February 5th, I left for Europe, and February 4th was my last day and my birthday. (laughs) So Unsettle had been alive for about a month before Um, So it launched on January 5th and between the period of me like actually having the concept of Unsettle and then going out and starting it and then leaving my job, I was just furiously building um, to the detriment of my relationships and everything like that. And I had a new marriage that kind of was kind of in trouble as I was building because I was just so focused. But so that was unfortunate, but I was building... Um, by like guest posting and getting the word out there about Unsettle and just kind of spreading the the knowledge that I had built up about building side businesses online about based on what you love. Um, and so when I left, I was already making some money from it, um, and but I it wasn't I wasn't focusing on monetization just yet. And then now it's been for over four months and I'm already making a full-time income from it and I just love the work it's so much all online all online yeah and um, it's not including my side businesses so before I quit my job I had several side businesses I'm kind of a like a serial side hustler so I have like an Etsy shop and things like that and um, yeah so it's not even counting that stuff Cool. So you had stuff going on on Etsy, like artsy stuff that was being sold online. And then you had a couple other things. It looks like I actually kind of started, I think probably four years ago, I started following Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income blog. And, you know, he essentially blogged for money. So I was like, oh, I could do that too. And I started one, I think it was called RookieVideoPro.com. And it was like four or five years ago. And uh, it's, I blogged for a while and uh, put ads up on the site and you know, when people click on the ads, you make some money. But uh, I, I never had st- stuck with it uh, because I was in my job and unfortunately when you work a full-time job, nine to five, 40 hours a week, you don't really wanna work outside of that job on anything else. You wanna have fun, you wanna see friends, family. And uh, like you said, you know, relationships can suffer when, when we're working on things. So you created something pretty awesome that lets you live life the way that you want it to. Uh, Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that uh, to you are important for staying happy and just staying uh, always moving through life and doing really cool stuff? Things that are important. Um, Excuse me. 
probably the biggest thing for me is control. So I'm a bit of a control freak. I like to be able to choose what I work on and where I am and, and my hours and everything like that. So that's probably the biggest thing as far as career happiness goes. Um, but everything that I'm building kind of goes toward one central goal, which is just to be able to spend time with people that I love. Um, and as much time as, as I want or as I can. Um, and so everything that I'm building is so that I can eventually, you know, just when, when my husband Jason and I decide to have a family, when we can actually just, you know, set our own hours and, and we can work around our family and our lives rather than, you know, build our lives around our work. So that is definitely something that makes me very happy. And then also I love to travel and that was a huge reason why I wanted to take it all online and then just be able to work from anywhere because it's something that I love to do. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going on like six trips this year. So That's I just, great. it's very important to me. So those are kind of three of the main things, just travel relationships and then, um, control. <laughs> I'm kind of in the same boat. Travel has been a big thing for me. And, you know, last year before I really started to do things, uh, I thought that travel was impossible for me because I'd be spending hundreds of dollars all over the place. And I started reading some travel hacking blogs and some, some podcasts about how to get cheap flights and things like that and following what they do. And I think I've flown on somewhere between like 12 or 15 almost free flights so far this year. That's so amazing. Like, last week was in San Diego. A week before that was in Boston. The week before that was in Las Vegas. And, you know, like along the way, I think I stopped in Phoenix at one point and I stopped in Los Angeles at one point. So there's, it's really cool to have that freedom to be able to, you know, fly and go wherever you want to and spend that time with your family. But, you know, when we talk about online businesses, a lot of people don't even understand, like, how are we making money? We just say online business and they're like, what do you just like make a website and magically money appears? So maybe talk a little bit more about like what types of businesses are these and how do they make money? Sure. So for Unsettle, my whole business model, it all has to be about building an audience and a tribe. So I'm providing value to my audience's lives by teaching them how to start businesses based on what they love. So not just any old niche site based on like whatever, you know, keywords are working, but like things that they'll actually love because I think that people do want to work. So people want to have projects that are going to be challenging them. They want to work and they want to, you know, contribute and, and provide value to people's lives. So, and I think that niche sites are great and they work and, you know, and they can be automatic income generators and that's fine. But I just think that people love to have something that's theirs and, and that they can build. So um, I really focus on teaching people to find out what they do love um, and whether or not it's monetizable and most things are, and then how they can provide value to somebody around that or to a group of people around that, and then actually turn it into sustainable income based on building an audience of people that, you know, that they that follow them and I think that that's just the way that careers are going to be changing from now on because people even if you work in an office having like an audience and a tribe and people that follow your work is just so valuable so that's kind of what unsettles based off of and how I actually make and earn money from that is I'm a coach so I do help people do these things on a one-on-one -on -one basis and then also on a group coaching basis and I also do a lot of affiliate income. Um, so I only promote products that I really love and that people need. So, you know, to create an online business, you need hosting. So, you know, it's all recommend my favorite host. Um, and, and it's just like a very, people think that internet business is very, you know, scammy and <laughs> sleazy, but it's not. It's just basically, if you're providing value to somebody, then they're going to, they're going to appreciate that and you're actually helping people out. So that's what I do for Unsettle. My other side businesses, one of them is the Etsy shop that I already mentioned and that there's like no barrier to entry. You just create something, put it up there. And um, I, I posted, we got married last year and I posted these like popcorn bags for a popcorn bar that we had. And so I created them for our wedding and then I was like, oh, maybe someone else would like this. And so I put it on Etsy one time when I was on a treadmill um, I was just like on my data phone. Um, and so I, I posted the listing and it sold right away. So wow. I made like $5,000 from it in a month. Um, and it's like a 30 cent listing. So 
there's a lot of people, a lot of people, I think they put these barriers in their head of why they can't do things like, oh, well, I can't, you know, I can't make any money on the side because I just don't, you know, I don't have the money to invest into it, but 30 cents, that's all you need to start an Etsy shop, right? Yeah. So expand <laughs> on that one a little bit more. So I've bought things on Etsy, like maybe twice, like one time I think I bought like a custom colored like knitted scarf or something for a friend and then actually just this last week um so i, I volunteer for a youth group and their uh their chapter their logo is a knight on a horse so uh, i bought these like uh, little metal sword charms to like go on a necklace you know but like so i've only seen it from the buyer's side but how does that work uh from the seller's side like you're able to make five thousand dollars off of some little 30 cent uh <laughs> listing i mean that's that's something i'm sure everybody wants to go home and do right now after listening to this <laughs> probably yeah you know what one second <coughs> excuse me i posted a post about this and there's just been like a full lot of people that are trying to do the exact same thing as i do with the bags and everything um i think basically for etsy if you have something unique to offer, or even if it's not unique, so you don't have to be the only seller in the marketplace that sells that thing, just put your unique spin on it. So what I did was, it was literally just a thought that came into my head. I downloaded the Etsy sellers app on my iPhone. I was on the treadmill. I took a iPhone picture of it to send to my mom the night before, um, cause we were doing the wedding planning thing. And I just posted it. And like the description was really short, but it caught somebody's eye. And so they bought it and then it just kind of spiraled from there. Um, so it's just super easy to do. And if you have anything that you want to sell, like I think, especially if you're, if it's, if it's different. So like there's going to be a million Etsy sellers that have jewelry stores. Yeah. So you might have a harder time breaking into that market. But if it's, you know, something where there's probably like less than a hundred sellers on Etsy, then you, you have a good, portion of the market, especially if you have professional photography and stuff, which I didn't do. So, I mean, you don't have to start with like really nice photography. Just take a picture, try to make it look good, of course, but then, and then post it and see what happens. Um, and yeah, it only, I mean, Etsy is just really easy to get into because I, I think it's a good idea to have your own shop with your own website, but it's just somewhere to start and it just takes away all those excuses for people like, yeah. need to, you know, and you need to only make one. You don't need to make a whole bunch. You don't need to make a whole batch. Like you only need to make one. Right. And like then you could sell a lot of one thing. And I think the best part about it in this case is like, you don't have to design a website. You don't have to design a logo. You don't have to get a business card. Like you just put it up there and Etsy also does the rest because it's searchable. So it's not like you have to even advertise really. People just find stuff on there. Right. Absolutely. And then just, you know, pin your, pin your product images to Pinterest and I get like all of my traffic outside of Etsy search engine itself is Pinterest mm -hmm. and 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 then you're golden like it's so easy to start and yeah you don't even I would even say you don't even you shouldn't start a website first because you don't know what the people want right so use Etsy as your testing kind of testing place and right. you know, test different designs or whatever and don't print out whole batches or, or spend all your time making, you know, if you're, let's say you're doing, um, I don't know, watercolor prints, make one. You don't need to make a whole bunch, make one and then do it as a made to order thing and see what people like. And then when you do have all of that, then you can start your own store. But it's not something that you're just going to like start an Etsy shop, quit your job, like take all the pressure off of yourself and just start with one thing, one listing. Right. And, and a couple other things, I guess. So it, it should be original, right? Like this should be some sort of crafty thing that you have created, not just like you bought and resold. You can do the, I think Etsy opened it up so that you can resell things. Um, but I think most people, we're going back to the kind of a craftsmanship style marketplace out there where people want to know that it's handmade and they want to know that it's special in some way. So I think that if you were going to do that, you might as well just go to Amazon or something like that, right? right? A bigger marketplace that's not just handmade stuff. Uh, people on Etsy really want that whole handmade feel. And I think that's very representative of where uh, these businesses are going right now is online businesses are making a comeback. It's that uh, for so many years, there were all these so-called gurus and experts out there. And it's just 
sale after sale after sale because everybody kind of got tricked into it. You know, it was much easier to convince people to buy online. And now we're kind of making this comeback where instead of just, you know, going for the sale, we're creating these communities of people that really care about uh, a certain thing. You know, for example, with us, it's living a life that you love. And I think that it's really cool to see things come full circle. You know, it was originally there were, we were in tribes. Like that's how things started. If you look back hundreds and hundreds of years ago, and we're kind of coming full circle back to this tribe mentality of, you know, there's this leader, but they're a very humble person who is offering something really good to the community. And that's why everyone's kind of grouping around this person. And it's funny to hear that because, uh, literally just today a few hours ago I was in the gym and you'll never know who's truly in your following you won't know everyone and uh, I was just sitting there packing up my stuff before I left and someone walked over to me and I talked to her once or twice but didn't really know her but I knew she was friends with me on Facebook and she says oh you know I've been watching all your stuff you've been posting online and it's so inspirational and she went on for like five minutes and she actually hadn't been subscribed to the podcast, so I got to show her how to do that. But it's crazy. You never really know who's watching. And you have a much so bigger true. audience than you'd think. Yeah. And uh, it could be something as cool as finding that craft on Etsy that everybody likes and making a community around it. Yeah, it's true, for sure. That, no, that's that's very awesome. Interesting. Yeah, on Unsettle, actually, I was looking at um, everybody. You know how, do you use Aweber? For your uh, email. I use uh, it's get response. It's pretty close. Yeah, so you can probably send out an email and then look to see who opened it, and it'll tell you how many emails they've opened before that that e email. So I'm look looking at the stats for this one, you know, email that I sent out, and I saw this person who has never emailed me. Like I get a ton of emails, but I, I remember names really well just because I do some like memorization practices. So I don't embarrass myself. <laughs> so I get a ton of email every day, but I know this person never emailed me because she's opened every single one of my emails and read them all and clicked through all the links that I add in my emails. And then I went to my email inbox and I searched her name and like, no, I had never talked to her before. So you just don't know who is watching and who's following. And she's like, must be my biggest fan because seriously, every email she opens, <laughs> she clicks through everything and she's never contacted me. And you tend to remember the, the people that, you know, contact you or are, are kind of like the loud few, but there's just these like secret little followers that you just didn't even know you had. So it's very interesting to, the internet's just, you know, it's an amazing place. <laughs> oh, yeah, and you don't realize the impact that you're making on certain people's lives because they might not speak up, you know, for a really long time. So it's really cool to just know that we're not just building a business, we're building a brand, and we're not just building a brand, but we're kind of building a, a family in a sense, you know, people that you're taking care of. And, yeah, uh, for sure. I, I guess getting into that, though, might be tough for some people because they have no clue what that one skill is that they have. You know, I went to high school in this video program. I went to college for a video program. So when I got out of school, I got a video job. And, and that's, you know, what I knew. But uh, I have a few friends who even have come up to me and said, look, like, I don't really know what my skills are. They have a college degree, but they just feel like they don't have any marketable skills. So how do you approach that, especially if you're in a coaching scenario and someone's like, you know, I want to build a business, but I, I don't know what I would do. Yeah, so that's a huge concern with a lot of my community. Um, so I actually created a course to help people find their kind of perfect lifestyle business idea based on what they love to do um, and also what they're skilled at. So. You can find that at unsettled.org forward slash free dash course. It's a little bit long, but um, that's that this free course is just like it helps them do the whole market research thing that so many people are daunted by. But also just starting where you are with your skills. So look back to see what other people have always told you you're good at. We tend to overlook those things, I yeah. find. And and they're usually really you know, really on point. So if you think about your best friend, she probably doesn't know, or he probably doesn't know what he's good at, but you do. Guaranteed, you know what he's good at. Like, I could say three things that my best friend is super good at right now, but there's no way that she'd be able to identify those things because we overlook it in ourselves. So just asking people that you know, you know, what what do you think that I'm good at? What do you think that I'm skilled at? Or what have you always admired that I do? So I think that's like the most powerful, quickest way to get those answers and then delving into them. So when they tell you, oh, you're a really good communicator, then 
start looking back in your life. Like if you've ever had a performance review, for instance, you'll probably see a pattern. So I always had people tell me that I'm so inspiring and blah, blah, blah. So, and I'm a good writer. And so that's where Unsettled was born for. I'd go, like, I went back in time and I started looking at like my performance reviews, car- the greeting cards that people had sent me. We had this recognition um, event at my last job and we'd write things down on post-it notes about what we're good at. And the same themes came up over and over again. And then even just taking personality assessments. So when I first started in my contract, they asked me to do a personality assessment to show me, show what I was good at in work. And um, the same themes came up, like I'm a good written communicator, I'm a good influencer, and um, insp- like I'm good at inspiring people and changing their minds. And then it'll tell you what you're not so good at too. So you might want to avoid those things and building businesses around those things because they're just not going to serve you well and you're, you're not going to enjoy it. So I'm really bad at giving people bad news. Like I don't like to be the, the messenger. And so I don't like to be not liked. And that's a huge thing for me. So I would never be able to like be somebody who has to discipline or, but some people are really good at that. Right. Mm-hmm. So just taking those kind of measured steps to find out what you're good at, I think it's a really great place to start. And then when you have that foundation of, okay, well, I'm a really skilled at, you know, analyzing data and I'm really skilled with numbers, then you can start pairing that with other skills of yours and interests of yours to really make an impact and start a business around those things. And it's, you might be surprised what you find out. So for me in my journey, I found that uh, ultimately almost two years into my business, I was like, why am I hating video editing all of a sudden? It, it just, I would, I would bring on clients and get a new gig and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'd love to shoot the video for this, but I'm like, why do I not want to edit this? And I started questioning myself. And what I learned was that uh, the video is not necessarily my passion, but the storytelling was and the video was more of just my best way of communicating it. And once I figured that one out, it, everything just started to click into place and fall into place. So you might be really surprised that, uh, you know, perhaps you're an expert at knitting and knitting is your thing. But, you know, maybe you'll find that it's more the creativity or the patterns that you like and that could transfer over into all sorts of other types of artwork and there's your Etsy store. So it's something to just kind of keep in mind as people are listening in and trying to question what's going on is, you know, don't ask necessarily what is my purpose or what am I supposed to do because that's not really the right question. It's not going to get you the right answer. But when you find out your strong points, like you were saying, you know, ask your friends. Uh, I think it was a great idea to look back in cards and look at what people have written to you because that, I mean, that would be a funny one for sure, just to see what people have said. And uh, you'll probably doubt yourself at first, but it's all true if it's coming from people that love you. Yeah, absolutely. And going back to your point where, you know, it might look in like different areas, but I think that you need to start somewhere and you're not going to nail it on your first try, like at all. I started a personal finance blog five years ago. That was my first foray into like any sort of side hustle. And I just don't like money that much, but I didn't know that at the time. And if I didn't start that blog, I wouldn't realize I wouldn't have realized how much I love writing and and community building. So I think you just need to start and you're never going to get it right on the first time. I don't I don't even think that that's the thing. And I think that you do evolve and change over time. So start somewhere and then just be flexible and adaptable. And, and as you've shown with the multiple income streams, this is something where it, And this is a different mindset. You know, this is not something that our parents were okay with. Our parents were like, get the same job, hold it for 30 years, and that's what you do, right? And it's like, you can start a new business next week if you want to and (laughs) run it for two years and then decide to do something else. And that's the coolest part about this is that we have to break this cycle of our parents raised us to think, oh, well, you just go to college, you get a degree so that you can find a job and then you hold it for... 30 or 40 years, you get a good 401k and retirement plan and you start a family at some point and that's how you live your life. And I guarantee you after that 30 or 40 years, you're going to look back and think that you wasted a lot of time 
Uh, and this isn't to tell every person right now who's working a job to quit your job. This is just saying, look into what options are out there, especially with, you know, you were on a treadmill posting to this Etsy store. So this is not something that has to start as a full time 40 hour a week thing. And I'm sure you've probably started to work your way towards not having to do 40 hours a week worth of work. Is that right? Yeah, I, I since Unsell started, I only work maybe, if I'm being honest, like 20 hours a week on it. But that's really hard focused work. But if you think about your day job, you don't work 40 hours a week. You're paid for 40 hours a week. But I mean, you're talking at the photocopier or you know, filling up your coffee or just trying to figure out where to start. So you're just staring at the blank screen. Like you're not actually putting in 40 hours of focused work. So I think that if you really love what you're doing and regardless of, I mean, even on the side, if you really love what you're doing, you don't need to put 40 hours of work into it. Like that's just our labor standards, right? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all set kind of like by the government that's not necessarily going to be your productive time. So yeah, don't there think is that no you... what you are supposed to do, right? Like everyone's like, oh, well, we're supposed to do this. You're supposed to get married in your 20, early 20s and you're supposed to get a job and get a good retirement plan. And there, there is, we have to cut this, you know, you're supposed to stuff out because when you start living under these guidelines that someone else made for you, then you're not really living your life. You're living someone else's. Yeah, and I think that at at the detriment of your future because nowadays the the person that only works at one job for 40 years is going to be at a huge disadvantage. There's no such thing as job security anymore. There might have been before, but there's no such thing as job security, especially if you're working for a company who has control over your job. So, you know, the whole supposed to just doesn't work anymore. Yeah. And I learned that really quick. I mean, my first job out of college, I worked for about a year to a year and a half and I thought everything was great and they sold the company. And within about a month or two, I was given a pink slip. So really nothing is permanent at this point. Uh, so one of the best bets is a work for yourself, but B multiple income streams is, is really a smart idea at this point in time. Um, Sarah, what's the best way for people to reach out to you, get in touch with you to learn more about, I know you had uh, a free URL thing that you mentioned earlier. If you want to mention that again, just so, uh, for those who are listening in and want to learn a little bit more about you or might even want to train with you to open up their own business, uh, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. So my website is unsettled.org. Um, so that's U-N-S-E-T-T-L-E. -T -T -E. A lot of people put a D at the end, but it's <laughs> <laughs> um, so unsettled.org is the website. The free course, it's completely free. There's nothing like you don't have to pay for anything. It's just unsettled.org forward slash free dash course. And it'll just kind of walk you through the steps of finding a really like a viable lifestyle business idea. Um, and then you can find me on Twitter at at my, um, it's at Peterson, so with an O, Sarah, an S-A-R, so Peterson Sarah. And yeah, other than that, I'm just kind of all over the, the web, um, but everything will be kind of all on Unsettle, so you can find me there. Sounds good. So everybody head over to unsettlewithoutad.org, Unsettle, U-N-S-E-T-T-L-E.org and you guys can check that all out there. We'll be making sure to uh, put those links in the show notes for you. So at yearofpurpose.com, if you guys are watching it on the website or on YouTube, uh, you can always check out those links there. Uh, if you're driving in the car listening to the podcast, don't worry, we've got it for you. So you can come back and find that when you are not driving because you shouldn't text and drive. So uh, Sarah, it's been great having you today. And you know, I look forward to seeing where things go. You know, you started in January with Unsettle. So you've got a lot of really cool things I'm sure planned ahead for the next year. And uh, I'm excited to where that, where that goes. Absolutely, thank you for having me. All right, we'll catch you later. All right, bye. You've probably heard me talk about designing a life that you actually want to live. You might have even heard about my travels or experiences and thought to yourself, yeah, I do want to do that. Eventually, someday I'll probably do it. And my guess is that you've been thinking about doing it for a long time. So I want to tell you this. Stop thinking. Your time is right now. You don't need any more time. You don't need any more info. You don't need to keep putting it off and planning for the perfect time because the truth of the matter is this. 
You could be the person who sits around and thinks about living a better life, or you can be the person that decides that today is the day that you're going to actually do it, and I want that for you. Because you already have what it takes. You've got a fire inside. Even if you can't see it right now, it's lit, but you need to open yourself up to the possibilities and throw a couple logs into the flames. So join me and the Euro Purpose tribe by subscribing to our YouTube channel and iTunes podcast. And if you really like us, please leave a review. This is Effin Moses Blacksburg, and I can't wait to see you again on the Year of Purpose podcast.